I am making one in my second block and one in this block. So this one's my second block one. And I actually went in and colored in Sharpie because I noticed I used white kind of paper and it was hard to see. So using this template now, you can kind of see where it lines up. Let me move my camera a bit. A little bit better anyway. Yesterday we got our base. So we took our base are, you know, fairly small base. We don't want to start with anything too big. Like I said, approximately the bottom side, the bottom of this cup. If you want to free cut the circle, that's fine. If you have something circular that's quite small to trace, um, I would go ahead and do that as well. From here, the template is going to help us build. You want to make sure that your template is not super pointy. So you'll notice when you cut it out all the way to the bottom, you have a point. You wanna make sure just to give that a little and it's not gonna be super pointy anymore. Now's where I'm gonna really start implementing my template. Cause I have the base, I lined up my coils and now I'm ready to really start building the vessel. You wanna make sure you have some slip and I'm actually gonna show you a little demo here. So this was my one from a prior class. The reason you need slip with porcelain is I have this here and I could try to smooth it on. And normally the clay would just stick together and be all happy and nice. But with porcelain, it breaks right off. So you really need that slip or else it's gonna crack. So that was, I was like, ooh, great demonstration opportunity. Look at that, people. Maybe I just got so excited about a piece of porcelain falling apart. So remember to keep your porcelain in your bag. If you feel like it's getting a little bit dry, you could always add a damp paper towel in there to re-wet it. And like I said, this porcelain I have is super dry. Is this better? Yeah, maybe this is a little bit better. And then just make sure it's closed up really well. And I want to go over a method now with you guys called the thirds method of coiling. I don't know if this is a method, but it's something I do. If I invented it, that would be amazing. Realistically, it's just smoothing your coils on both sides but I think breaking it up into thirds makes a lot more sense and helps you get it a lot more even. Even here, see what happens? How the coil separated when I put the clay together? This is kind of dry clay though. You know, like I said, take your four bags of clay. It should be good for each project. But if you ever need more, it's here. So now it comes in when I'm gonna really use my template. First, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna slip and score. Um, you could use a few different tools. You could use your rib. I like to personally use that and just kind of like boop, 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 boop. Why do we slip and score? Like how, what is the purpose of these score marks? Why not just put slip on? Because it wouldn't stick without the scores. Exactly. Why? Do you, do, like anyone? That's true. 
Maybe because the scores let it slide into place. Yes. So the slip goes on into the little marks that you're making. And because it's part of the clay now on both sides, the slip binds that together. So you have a bit of a deeper bond than you would, you know, just throwing your slip on there. We'll put a little slip on there. You guys could use a little paintbrush. Um, you could use just one of your tools. You could use your finger, whatever you need to apply your slip. So here is my template. I'm gonna line it up and I'm going to try to attach my coil approximately lining up with the template. Now I say approximately because we're definitely gonna have to adjust it a little bit, but this is gonna help you get pretty close to the shape that you wanna make. And I like to use um, doing like north, south, east, and west, like a compass lining it up. And it looks like this coil got a little too short, so I'll have to implement another little piece in. Oops. And I'm gonna wanna make sure to put a little slip on here. And just fit that little section in and make sure to, you know, smooth it together really well. So my goal for these vases is to have them constructed by next Wednesday and then by the end of the week start going in and drawing our designs on. Um, we're going to do a technique to smooth them really nicely called burnishing and it's really fun. It makes the piece really shiny and it also condenses the clay so when you go to draw on it it's not going to be as fragile. So right now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna smooth my coil inside and out. I lined it up approximately with my stencil so I know it's pretty close. It's pretty close. But first we're gonna smooth it in because it's gonna change slightly as we smooth it. Now you can use your finger to smooth. These are not always gonna be like the prettiest right now when you're smoothing them. If you're looking here, what I like to do sometimes is use this tool to smooth this down and I'll smooth it down like twice and then bring it over. Another thing you could do is use your rib tool, but you want to make sure to really support your shape when you're using your rib tool. And that works pretty well. Uh, attaching so you could go with your rib um, sometimes I like to smooth in with my finger first so that I am evenly dispersing the clay going down and then swipe my rib across it these ceramic terms you know having any other conversation so now what I mean about the rule of thirds is when working with coils, you're smoothing the inside and you're smoothing the outside. And sometimes people smooth more or less uh, and that could throw off your shape a little bit, especially when we're trying to, you know, keep these really distinctive shapes and having them go with your designs. I smoothed about a third of this in and so I would normally make three lines but I'm just gonna make another little mark so I know where I want to start smoothing it in so it would look like one two three and that's gonna leave you two with the same 
um, same exact width of coil going up. So you're gonna have a nice sturdy vase that's very uniform. And just make sure that you're really holding it nice with your hand. And I don't know um, how, how many of you did start yesterday, but you might notice that as you're, you know, working and have a few coils on there, your pot is gonna get a little bit dry. Just resting it overnight will change that. So making sure that you cover it with damp paper towel, the porcelain will really revive itself. And that's one thing I like about porcelain. While it is very temperamental, it's also really good at absorbing water and drying out quicker. So you could, one, re-wet it while you're working with it, and two, smooth it out um, a little bit faster when you're done. We're gonna go in, we're gonna smooth these up really well when we're finished. Um, yes, here's my template. So, north, south, east, and west. We wanna act like a compass. Right here, I have it lined up, but it doesn't quite line up all the way, so I'm gonna push it out. Then I'm gonna go to the other side, line it up, and this I'm gonna definitely need to push out quite a bit. Go to my next side, I need to push that out. So this is really helping you line it up to get the shape you want. And that one's good. And if you even feel like, you know, some of it's cracking and you're kind of at a spot that you want to stop, you could go in with a little bit of slip, try to fill in some of those cracks. Don't, you know, get too much water on it, but just, just a little bit. And you could see we have like a fairly even edge all around on this now. It's gonna be a little bumpy on the outside, but trust me, trust me, it's gonna be fine. Once we get it off the board, we're gonna make these so smooth, they're gonna shine, like literally. I'll show you a short clip of burnishing tomorrow. I had like a little burnished piece and I, I think I took like what, a 30 minute clip of it, but. So hopefully that makes sense in terms of working with your template. So now, you know, you could see that it is lined up and I would be ready to go ahead and add my next coil. Now my next coil is gonna go inward. So that's gonna be a little bit different of a situation. Um, let me go ahead and stop this and then I'll check in on templates and then we'll go back.